Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretively. Another day, another dollar. It's what you get when you inherit the family business. I guess I'll get some work done here tonight, here from my home office. I've got some contracts to go over. I've got some forms to fill out. I've got to get some, my proposal together for that new billboard there on the Jerusalem Expressway. <sighs> I've got a lot of stuff to do. Uh, I think the first thing I should get done, though, is, yeah, Facebook. Okay, what do we got? Cat video, cat video. That one's wearing a sweater. Cat video, political rant, something about Herod, rebuilding the temple, going to make the temple great again. Not sure about that one. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, I can feel my phone vibrating. Phone, 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 phone. I'll put it on my Bluetooth headset. Uh, yeah, Joseph's uh, carpentry business. Uh, if I can't build it, God never willed it. This is Joseph speaking. How can I help you? Oh, hey, Mark. Near my computer? No, no, I'm not near my computer. No, no I'm not. Not as big of a nerd as you. Well, I should get on my computer. Well, oh, you saw me like that one cat video you posted. Well, it was a cat, and he was wearing a sweater. I'm not made of stone. Well, first of all, what are you doing reading my, my wife's Pinterest account? Or my future wife's Pinterest account? All right, fine. I'll log on to Mary's Pinterest, see what she's posting there. Mary, 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 let's see, Pinterest, what's her username? Okay, Virgin Mary. It's kind of an odd screen name. Uh, this is her usual stuff here, Mark. I mean, we got, we got, you know, she's got like pictures of like her bridesmaids' dresses for our upcoming wedding. She's got some flower bouquets, some like do-it-yourself Pinteresty types of projects. 30 things you can do with a pine cone. Well, wait a minute. Mary's way too big to wear that onesie. She's got like a onesie. There's some like baby bottles, something called a baby bajorn. Listen, Mark, I, 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 I got to go. I got to go. I got to take a look at this. It's like her Pinterest account has the wedding stuff, but she's got all this other baby stuff there too. I mean, maybe she's looking forward to our future after we get married here not too long from now. Although she was saying the other, the other week about, you know, her, her cousin being like six months along, but I figured she was joking because her cousin's like way too old for that kind of thing to be going on. I don't really get it. Something is going on here with, with, with Mary. There's something about Mary. really one way to handle a mature, adult, difficult conversation. I'll text her. <laughs> Mary, lots of baby stuff on your Pinterest. What's the deal? Send. Uh, Mary is typing. Yes, I'm expecting, tried to tell you the other week, but you were too busy getting tickets to Rogue One. <laughs> oh, 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 there's more. 
Uh, yes, I am with child. AOL told me. AOL. Okay, text her back. Who still uses America Online? <laughs> no, AO, no, AOL, Angel of the Lord, LOL, SMH. <laughs> Holy Spirit conceived, talk more later. <laughs> Doesn't settle anything. I'd say I'm going to be a daddy, but I'm not going to be a daddy. I mean, unless I really didn't pay attention in health class. There's no way that I'm the father of this kid. And now she's telling me some story about the Holy Spirit and angels? What does she take me for? This is why my dad said you should never propose to a girl you meet on J-Date. This is a lot to process. I mean, we've, we both have been faithful to what God's called us to. At least I thought we were both faithful. But now Mary's pregnant with some made-up story about the Holy Spirit, about some angel visiting her. There's no way she can possibly expect me to buy that. I mean, we have been faithful. We loved each other, or so I thought. How could she do this to me? I mean, doesn't she realize that people will find out? This won't, this won't just look bad for her. This will look bad for me, too. I mean, this will look bad for all of us. Who, who, who even was it? I, 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 don't, I don't even know that many of her male friends. Could it have been like a Roman guard? I mean, what... What's happening here in our relationship? I, 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 I don't know. I mean, what kind of chump does she take me for? All right, look. Op options. Options. I need, I need options. Think. All right, now, she and I have both been raised in, in really godly, Jewish homes. We, we know the law. We've been taught to fear the Lord. I mean, she can even quote scripture better than most girls that I know. I could go through with it. I mean, we could, just, we could just move the wedding date up. We could go through with it. We could get married. It'll be fine. I'll, I'll raise the child as if the child was my own. Except I'll know. Of course, God will know. And if she knows she's pregnant, that means that she's, she's far enough along that she knows it, it's not going to be nine months from now that she'll have the baby. People will figure that out. Even the homeschool kids can do the math on that one. <laughs> no, no, and no one, no one would, would buy furniture made by the carpenter who, who got his wife pregnant out of wedlock. So, so going through with this, is not, that's not the option. I just, I'm, just, I'm, I'm so, so mad. I mean, I could just expose her right now. Just post it on Facebook for the world to see. Just publicize what she has done. Just go ahead and just publicly get, just get rid of her. Just dump her, divorce her, whatever we call it. We just, get, just get it over with. It's legal. I could do that. I remember my parents telling me about how sometimes when, when women were, were caught like that, they'd often be publicly stoned. I mean, they would be shamed and humiliated at worst and physically harmed. The only thing I have left to do is I can, I can divorce her quietly. All I need is a certificate of divorce, two witnesses, I can tag two friends on Facebook for all I, I know and just, just agree to just get, get rid of her. I mean, I still love her. I don't want any harm to come to her or the relationship. 
I think the best thing to do at this point is just to quietly spare her as much shame as I can and just let this relationship be over. I think the best way to do that, again, the most mature way, is to send her an email. I mean, I can take care of more things tomorrow. I mean, it's getting, it's getting really late as it is. I'll start this email right now, and maybe then by tomorrow uh, we can get, take care of some things more in, a, in the more legal capacity. But uh, it, is, it is getting late, and I, I do need to just, again, get, get some of this done and taken care of. And I think the best way to take care of all that is just to really just go ahead and, and send her the email and just be done with it. I think the best thing for working late at night uh, is, a, is a big thing, a warm milk and the Pandora lullaby station. I think that will be perfect. All right. Dear Mary, I have to say something to her that, that no guy has ever said to any woman ever before. It's not you. It's me. Okay, that's good. It's a good start. Good start. All right, the more, the more warm milk. Okay. I think we should see other people. Ooh. I'm so tired. I gotta get through this, but maybe. Ooh. Warm milk was a bad choice. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. Mr. Simon, bring me a dream, make him the cutest that I've ever seen. Oh, hey, hey, what are you? Hi. What are you doing in my apartment? Relax. What do you mean relax? Is that is that my iced tea? Did you take the iced tea from my fridge? There's a weird dude in your room, and that's the first question <laughs> that comes to mind. How'd you even get in here? I just kind of walked right in, listened to a little tune. Are you the ghost of Christmas past? What? That's the wrong story, man. Christmas isn't even gonna be invented for like another nine months. I think you know why I'm here. I, 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 I first of all, I, I, I don't. I, I guess I just must be dreaming. Well, you are dreaming. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, so that's, that's a good thing. Uh, but actually, uh, I'm here to, to share you a couple of things. First off, you're dreaming. <laughs> Welcome to a dream reality. Uh, but as you guys know, uh, there's many people that often dream throughout scripture and are still told various stories. In fact, why it is it with Joseph in dreaming? It's crazy. It's all, always some weird dude who just falls asleep and God shares a story with him. So are you like, are you the same angel that came to appear to Mary? Uh, let's just say there's been a lot of chit chat going around the water cooler upstairs and uh, We've been uh, looking into uh, really what's going on with you and Mary, and we're so pumped about it. Everybody's pumped about it. I was talking about it. The guy I was talking to the other day upstairs was talking about it. We were all chatting about it, and everyone agreed we are so pumped. Everyone except for you. So what on earth is up with this email that you're writing? 
How can you be pumped about this news? You know what's going on, right? Mary and I aren't married yet. We're engaged. I mean, there's just no way this is all for real. I mean, come on. Mary is pregnant. The wedding's not in for some time now. What do people say about this? What will they think? Meanwhile, Mary's been, I, I don't know, she's been reading like the Jerusalem Choir, talking about spouting off about angels, Holy Spirit. All I really want to know is who's the real father? It's got to be somebody's kid, right? I, it's, I know it's not mine. I mean, is there some kind of heavenly paternity test out there to see who's the baby daddy? <sighs> I'm going to be on Ricky Lake. <laughs> well, what are your options right now? My options are pretty limited. I mean, like I was saying before, I could, I could go through with it, but then we're both going to be, pub, you know, subject to public scrutiny and shame. Well? I, I, could, I could expose her as, as being unfaithful, but you know what happens then. I mean, she'll bear that stigma the rest of her life, if not be physically harmed in the process. I think the only thing I have left, the whole reason I'm writing the email, is because may, maybe there's the, this is the only way I, I, I can do, the only thing I can do to spare her the shame and end our relationship. So I'm going to divorce her quietly. Hmm. Well, I guess those are some good ideas. You, you have any better idea? So let me, let, me, let me guess. If you figure this out, then you earn your rings. What is it with you, mankind, relating everything to a book, TV show, or movie? Every single thing, you guys are like, oh, that's like a quote from The Office. Uh, look, man, did it ever occur to you that you only have two options? Two options? You can trust Mary or you don't. And honestly, it's not even about trusting Mary. It's about trusting God. Of course I trust God. I just don't see what you're getting at. Because you're scared, and you should be. This is unknown territory, man. Yeah, it's been, there's been some special bursts in the past, but this one's different. Your wife has been faithful, and yet she really is pregnant with your child, or with the, uh, the child of God. And nine months from now, you guys will have, be parents and a, a, to a guy named Joshua, or Jesus, here in Greek culture. Jesus? Joshua? It means God saves, right? You catch on quick. This child will grow to be the one who saves the world, the one who takes all sin away. All because 700 years ago, Isaiah promised that one day a child would be born, and that child would be Emmanuel. Emmanuel it means God with us, right? You're a smart guy, Joseph. You can do so, so much more than carpentry. Uh, exactly. Listen, the child will grow to, uh, I already read that. Uh, exactly. Look, Joe, this is the ordinary person. So nothing in this life, not even his birth, will be anything close to ordinary. It's just all weird. Trust me, it's bound to get a whole lot weirder. A whole lot weirder. <laughs> Look, Joe, this is happening. Have a little faith, would you? Look, you're sleeping. This is all a dream. And you're going to wake up tomorrow, and it's going to be up to you to decide what kind of world that you want to wake up to. You can either choose to dump Mary and go on with your boring life building, what, chairs? Ah, uh, who cares? Or you can join Mary in the adventure that God's inviting you into. Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took him, his wife, and did not know her till she had brought forth their first son, and he called his name Jesus. Uh, well, howdy, Tri-State. Uh, we've had a lot of fun this morning talking about Joseph. And, um, I mean, we, we brought, you know, dragged Joseph kicking and screaming into the real world of Facebook and social media and J-Date and a few other random things as well. But, but Joseph's choice is real. It was real for him. It's real for us today as well. I mean, our, our only two real options in life in general are to either trust God 
or not. And Joseph had that choice to make himself because Joseph lived in that era when this kind of dilemma would have, would have been a, a significant cultural crisis and a very personal crisis because this wasn't really the, the, the way things were supposed to happen in ancient uh, first century marriages. And, and if Joseph didn't really wrap his head around what the angel was bringing forth to him, then the only thing that he could find to explain was that this, would hap- this was happening through natural means, and that Mary, his, his beloved fiance, um, was in some way being unfaithful to him. He, Joseph isn't recognizing the, the situation for what it really is, because he's, he's thinking narrowly in very specific human terms. And when the angel comes to him, when the angel you know, reveals to him that, listen, what's happening now has been foretold by God through the prophets, that, that there would be a day when, when God would arrive to be physically present on earth in the person of Jesus, that when that happens, that God would redeem people from their sins. And you have to understand that in the first century world, many people had very different, just wildly different expectations about what this child was supposed to be, or what the Messiah specifically was supposed to be. And and even today, our our understanding of Jesus is often shaped by what we think the the, the fundamental problem really is. If we think our fundamental problem is moral, then we want a good moral teacher. If we think our fundamental problem is political, then we want a good silver-tongued politician or even a, a social revolutionary, another, another Gandhi. But if our deepest problem is sin, then what we need is a savior. Someone to come to earth to be the Lamb of God, to be the one that would ascend from the lowliness of the manger to the agony of the cross, that, that on that cross we would have the possibility of the forgiveness of sins, as well as an invitation to have our lives transformed as we live our lives in Christ and through the power of the Spirit that he bestows. And and that's why Christmas is so radically essential. That's why Christmas is so radically weird. We we need to have that weirdness in Christmas because there's, there's a weirdness to the Savior, or at least a strangeness to our, our human understanding. There's a reason why John, in his biography of Jesus, starts by saying this is the Word of God, uh, and that the Word is made flesh, and the darkness has not understood it. Because there's something that, that to, to human darkened understandings, there's something wildly incomprehensible about this child. Only when we begin to trust We begin to obey like Joseph did. Only when we begin to see that there is something more for us does that faith begin to shape in us a greater sense of understanding and a greater sense of wonder at what this holiday season is fundamentally about. See, a lot of us us pull back when we talk about trust because trust seems easy when the situation is easy. Trust seems easy when the goals are very human in nature. It's easy to, to, to say to God, I'll, I'll trust you if or I'll trust you when. Or we might be wondering if we're on the outside of, of Christianity or we haven't really made the real bold step of faith or we haven't really deepened our faith yet. To start to wonder if, if following Jesus will benefit me as I journey along life's path. Will following Jesus, will, will Christianity as a whole, will that, will that assist me if I choose to go back to school? Or, or will, will following Jesus help me be a better employee around the office? Will, will following God, will that in, in some way enable me, empower me in my family? If I choose to follow Jesus, will I have to change a thing about my lifestyle? Will, will God reject me or condemn me for some choices I've made in the past? And, and, and from, I mean, even here in Joseph's life, we're seeing a man who's, who's called to follow God, even in difficult circumstances. And throughout the life of Jesus, he calls his followers out of places of comfort and doesn't really answer those questions. He only says, follow me. Follow me. Because here's how it ties together. 
if Jesus, the virgin birth, reveal, if the, the virgin birth reveals that there's something supernaturally unique about Jesus, that he is God in the flesh, that he has come to take away the sin of humanity, if Jesus takes care of the deepest, darkest parts of us, the worst of humanity's problems, if Jesus takes care of that, there is literally no other circumstance in life that we can't trust God in. Joseph chose to trust God even amidst the difficulty of his own circumstances, the strangeness of his surroundings. That, that even though it took a very bold step, that he had to trust God even then. And, and there were, of course, social consequences to that, just as there might be social consequences for us today if we proclaim ourselves publicly as followers and servants of Christ. But what God asks of us, what he asks each of us, is that we, like Joseph, would be willing to take that bold step of faith, that we would recognize that God is at work throughout human history, that, that even his body, the church, would be in some way a representation of Christ being present on earth among us and with us. What we are asked this morning, I think, by this story is to come to that, that fork in the path, just like Joseph, and to recognize that we have only one of those two choices. T to believe in God, to believe in Jesus, to believe in this Christmas story, is also to trust him, not just when the season is over and the lights are back in the attic, but to trust him daily with each and every choice that we make. And to recognize that, that trust, yes, it demands patience, it demands time, and there might be maybe very difficult things ahead of us. Trust doesn't necessarily lead to earthly happiness, but it does lead to lasting, heavenly, eternal joy. And that was Joseph's choice, and that's our choice as well. Let's pray together as we wrap up. Father, we are grateful for examples like Joseph uh, and the, the birth of your son, Lord, we are thankful that uh, you, have, you have made yourself known amidst even the, the difficulties and the strangeness of this wild Christmas story. Lord, I pray that we would just take a, a moment to search our own hearts and reflect if there's any ways in which we have failed in any way to be faithful, to be diligent, to follow you uh, with our whole being or if there are parts of our hearts that we still have yet to surrender to you, Lord. Lord, I pray that your spirit would search us this morning and that we would be men and women who uh, allow your spirit to work in us to raise to the level of our consciousness those things that we hold back, those things that we hold deeply to ourselves, those things that we selfishly cling to rather than you. And rather, Lord, that we would be men and women who wholeheartedly surrender every facet of our lives and every part of ourselves to you. We ask all these things in your Son's holy name and by your Spirit's power. Amen.